This winter is already setting up to be an interesting one to say the least. Snowpack is building fast, the Arctic is disrupted, and La Nina is back on the table. In this video, we'll track the rapid snow growth across the Northern Hemisphere. We'll talk about how cold air is building across Siberia, also into Canada as we move through the month into next month. And we'll look to the past to some clues. 2013 and 2014 had an interesting look to it that's kind of similar to this year. Plus, we'll look at the medium range. We'll look into Canada because we could be looking at our first fall snowstorm. We'll talk more about that in just a second, but we want to start with the past. This is the snow cover and the ice cover across the northern hemisphere looking back. We do this every week. I want to compare this week today to the last couple of years. Blue is snowpack. Orange is ice. This is 23, 24, 25. So a little more sea ice secure just to the north of Alaska, and this week we continue to build that snow up across Siberia. There's been research that shows that the more snow you build here, you start to see more of a wavy jet. I know I've been talking about that for several weeks, and that could really mean an active start to winter, maybe some strong December and January storms, and we're also starting to see that cold get reinforced. What you don't see is a cold core of air that's just spinning across the North Pole. In fact, what you do see is that cold air being displaced, as it does so because of this flow that's moving moving in from the south, it's lodging it down into parts of Siberia. I think that's going to continue to add the snow up. Look at the temperature departures across Siberia over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to let this run out. The idea of it staying below average across this part of the world is on the table, and I think that means more snow. Of course, the European uh, extended ensemble guidance is showing that as we head through October into November. Yeah, you normally get snow here. I get that, but we have a little more this year. Could that mean a wavier polar jet? I think it could, and that is starting to grow, in my opinion, at least the confidence. One thing's for sure, it's not that cold across Canada right now in the lower 48. So the snow outlook heading through October, kind of slim across this part of North America. However, there is some snow in the forecast. Let's move to the North Pacific. We've been watching this region too. Some really warm water last year just to the southwest of the Aleutians. This year, it's still there. But what's different this year is the water's a lot warmer just to the southwest of Alaska, right here near the Bering Strait. Does that mean anything? Well, maybe so. In fact, we've already kind of seen that. Multiple storms that have been just driving into Alaska, that would likely push some pretty warm air north across this part of uh, Alaska into the Northwest Territories, dislodging some cold air later as we head into the winter. We'll have to wait and see how all this plays out. Last year, it wasn't quite this warm across this region, but one thing's for sure, if you look to the past, it was cold in 2013 and 2014 when we had a very similar look with the weak La Nina almost to what we would consider ENSO neutral conditions. And this really goes at the heart of what I think this winter is going to look like. More on that in just a second. I'll show you what I'm talking about. We have some cooler water starting to show up across the eastern Pacific. Now, the date above me shows you where we are. We're going all the way into last year. I want to show you how we developed almost a bit of a weak El Nino as we headed toward what now into March and April of this year. But look what's happening over the last couple of months. Colder water starting to develop. You're getting more of an easterly flow and that's causing that upwelling, that colder air at the lower part of the ocean starting to be pulled toward the surface. So as we enter winter, a bit of a La Nina trying to develop across the eastern Pacific. So now we're doing a little bit of analog forecasting, looking back to winters of the past. And 2013 into 2014 was similar with this, with a bit of a weak La Nina. The Climate Prediction Center now has a La Nina watch with about a 71% chance of developing this La Nina now October through December. It's pretty weak, I'll tell you that, compared to years past. And with the forecast for this to continue to drive more toward neutral conditions as we head into winter, it does mirror that 2013-2014 time frame. This was an extremely cold winter for a lot of the upper Midwest. In fact, this winter was the coldest going back to 1978 and 79. It was a pretty anomalous winter. And I'm not saying we're going to see this type of winter because I just think there are some other things happening too. It's pretty warm across Canada right now. But if you were to compare what's happening in the Eastern Pacific, it's kind of similar. And I would say we're definitely seeing some cold air billow here across Siberia. So something to keep an eye on over the coming weeks, because I'll be curious if some of this cold air starts to really migrate into parts of North America. Now, as we look at the forecast outlook over the next couple of weeks, let's move first here to parts of Alaska and Canada. This is a bit of a different look. This is over to Celsius because I want to show you the dividing line between freezing temperatures. That's this sharp contrast line between this purple and this, what is this, sort of a grayish blue color. That's freezing, 32 Fahrenheit, zero Celsius on this particular scale. 
And you can see where the temperatures below freezing are as we head through the upcoming week into next week. Some of that tries to break south, and we actually push some colder air down into parts of central Canada, down into the prairies. And it'll be interesting to see, too, how this really cold air evolves as we head through late October into November, and we continue to build that snowpack up here across the Northwest Territories in Alaska. So not a forecast here of exactly how much snow you're going to see in Kansas City, St. Louis, Indianapolis, New York City. I don't think anyone knows at this point. I mean, there's no way. But the trend that I'm continuing to see this week in this week's update is a colder North America, at least from the Rockies East. I think this is going to have winter starting with a bang as we head into December and January. I think it also means some extremes, big warm-ups, and some really rapid cool-downs just because of the type of setup. And while I think we'll get our cold shots of air in February and March, we may end up with a really strong Pacific jet that starts to scream in and kind of cuts that cold air off heading into February and March, especially as we watch the ENSO index switch over to more of a neutral phase. We'll see on all of this. I don't have a crystal ball, but... Just some hints at some things I'm looking at. If you enjoy this type of content where we're updating winter weather every week, subscribe. It helps the channel, and if you enjoy it, come back and geek out with me. Let's look at some of the snow that's going to be falling here across parts of Canada this week and into Alaska, too. In fact, we warm up for some rain across parts of Alaska, but still cold enough for that rain-snow mix to really continue. Now, something is really showing up on the models of interest to me. You're going to have this system that starts to dive to the south east heading into next week out of alaska down into western canada i'm going to widen this out and stay with me for just a second because look at this next week there could be some tropical moisture moving into the southwest here's that piece of energy diving in from the northwest look how that's expected to move into the rockies which by the way could bring some really heavy rain to this region watch these two systems trying to get really close together here across western canada Man, I'm telling you, we could have one heck of a storm heading into next weekend. It's still pretty far out, but I'm watching it. And that could really help our cooling trend across North America if you're hoping for a cold winter. I know all of you may not be, and I'm certainly not taking sides. I'm just a big fan of winter forecasting specifically, and of course all the challenges it brings. The GFS next week is also trying to show this storm to developing across the prairies of Canada, but putting some snow back into Alberta, into the mountains specifically. But you know, this could move out into places like Calgary, up towards Edmonton. Let's wait and see as we track these early winter storms. There will surely be more on the way and they'll start to migrate south as we head through October and November. Snow is right around the corner, guys, and the cold, my friends, it's building.